Hey there! Eric sent me four pens, and um, one of the very interesting ones that he has sent me is um, actually an oversized pen, and this really shows to demonstrate that when I say I have relatively large hands, I'm not lying. This is the pen. No, it's clearly not an oversized. This is a super small pen, um, about the size of my little finger. It's a vintage pen, it's a very cute one, and it's known and feared as Peter Pan. Um, it's a cute little pen, I'm going to cover the parts of the pen, I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then I'll do a writing sample. Um, now, first of all, it is of course super small, so trying to show you all the parts is going to be very interesting. As you can see, it's a ring top, there we go. Uh, has a little ring on there uh, that means you can put it, for example, around a cord or, or a little chain around your uh, chain. I mean, a, a necklace around your neck, um, which means you always have a small pen with you. Uh, it has a very interesting texture. I'm assuming this is ebonite, um, hard rubber. Um, you see, there's a gold ring. That ring should not necessarily be there. That was added because there was a little crack in the uh, the cap, and this sort of keeps it together. Okay, then we have the barrel, which as you can see tapers down, um, and then it ends in that small thing. Okay, now, I say again, this, this really is not a big pen, but it has a 14K flex nib, believe it or not. Um, it's a small nib, but it is gold, it has a little heart-shaped breather hole, and it says Peter Pan 14 KT, 14 karat. One of those nice old, whoops, sorry, vintage feeds. And you see a very small section and threads. Uh, you fill this thing quite simply by unscrewing the section. It's not friction fit, it screws out. You use an eyedropper and you f put a few drops of ink in there. Now, I haven't measured the capacity, but clearly it's, it's not uh, going to be huge. Uh, the final thing uh, that is on here is that it says Peter Pan Salts Bros Ink NY. Um, I'm not sure if I can really show you that inscription, but it's it's right there. Okay, so of course uh, you can post the pen, which is a good thing because for me writing like this would be uh, slightly awkward. Now the problem is, even when you post it, of course you have to be very careful to not crack that, that cap. It does post fairly securely because, as you may have seen, the end of the barrel tapers down a bit. Uh, but even when I post it, I, I can hardly uh, hold it. Um, so this clearly is a pen for short notes, not for writing your memoirs. Uh, but hey, it's, it's a unique little object, I have to say. Um, cap screws on there nicely. Um, so let's let's talk about this pen a little bit more. What I like about it, what I don't like about it. Well, when it comes to portability, um, I would say that this is it. I think the whole pen is is smaller than a Caveco Sport cap, even. So it's it's definitely small. It's the smallest fountain pen I know of. Uh, very cute, very nice. Uh, so that is it definitely has that going for it. Um, it has a nice flex nib. It actually offers decent line variation, which is very cool. Uh, I like that about it. Uh, things I don't like about it, well, the size is a double-edged sword. I mean, if you have somewhat larger hands, this thing is almost impossible to use, and yet it's extremely funny. You see, I'm I'm not used to holding small things and um, you know manipulating small objects, but um, it still is a lot of fun to use. Um, so, guys, don't worry if your pen is small, it apparently can still be fun. Um, just an awesome little thing. It's just, it's not a novelty item, I mean, it is an official vintage pen, it is cool to use. It has a 14K freaking flex nib, so it definitely is a step up from just a, a, a $1 Chinese pen that is made to look very weird or something. It's not a novelty pen, it's an actual fountain pen that works, it's an eyedrop, it holds ink. It, it does what it's supposed to do. So I find it very, very fascinating. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some measurements, which clearly in this case is going to be very interesting. Um, capped. 
including the little ring, the pen is 65 millimeters and uncapped it is 54 millimeters. Now I'm sure that you also want to know what it is like posted in this case so that would be 80 about 89 and a half millimeters okay section diameter <laughs> I'm sorry I'm laughing all the time it's just such a weird looking little thing but it's so cute uh, it's about five millimeters at the narrowest point at the widest point it's about six millimeters so it really really is a small one um, let's weigh it so that is inked up with eyedropper capacity of ink but it's not a lot the little thing weighs four grams inked it is extremely cute so there you have it I think you want to see this pen in action I sure do uh, I've been using it and I was quite surprised by its performance so uh, let's check this out. Guys, I hope this was useful. Eric, thanks so much for sending me this cute pen. You have sent me, I have to say, uh, the biggest pen I've ever seen, as well as the smallest pen I've ever seen, so you've pretty much covered all ends of the spectrum. Um, awesome. Guys, I'll see you later. Hope this was useful, and uh, enjoy the writing sample. Bye-bye. Okay, guys. Uh, time to use this Peter pen. Now, Please bear with me. It's it's hard for me to even hold this pen, let alone write with it. So um, I'm going to do my best. I know my hand kind of blocks the view, but what I mean, I, <laughs> there's no other way I can hold this little thing. That is not what she said, by the way. Just for the record, Peter Pan. I'm going to call this the micro pen. The nib is a fine, and the ink is Mont Blanc Royal Blue. Okay, let's do a bit of writing. No quick foxes today because I can't <laughs> I can't use this pen for so long. Um, my hand cramp is already cramping up, so. Um, size doesn't matter. Let's do that a bit faster. Notice the beautiful ink flow, but also notice the almost italic quality of this nib. I really have to... Where's my loop? I really have to take a loop to this. Is that... It, it is a bit italic. How fascinating. Anyway. Um, I think that is just wear and tear you got there, but you see it is a little bit flattish, huh? A little bit flattish. Sorry, it's hard to put this into focus, but it's even a bit oblique, it seems. Very fascinating. Could just be wear and tear. It could be that this was originally an oblique. The nib is not marked to say which grade it is, so I don't know. Um, Side does not matter. As to wetness, for such a small pen, such a small nib, it, it puts down a nice amount of ink. Now, when it comes to flex, yeah, then we get some railroading, but look at that beautiful and with just a soft touch uh, which means that if you're looking for a pen that is going to add character to your handwriting this one would be awesome were it not that it is extremely little but you can get beautiful flex writing with this um, and I just can't stop. I'm sorry. Gotta do my last name too. Very good, consistent flow. Beautiful. This is what makes using a good vintage flex pen so much fun. Okay. Um, I think I've covered it all. We can do a little bit of reverse writing, but I don't think you would use that pen a lot for this. You'll get an extra, extra fine uh, with that. Uh, and it's very uh, uh, dry when you do that. Um, 
Eric, thanks a lot for sending me this thing. I know it's small, but this is a little gem, guys. Um, so, thanks a lot. I hope I haven't bored you to death. Um, I hope you've enjoyed seeing this thing in action. Um, I love it. Again, Eric, thanks a lot. And uh, that's all there's to it, guys. I hope to see you later. Bye!